Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set Circuit Break Introduces Spiral Link Altergeist Crawler and Rocket This booster set was released on October 19th 2017. Now this set is quite historic and you might think that it isn't, that there's nothing significant that happened with uh, Circuit Break as a set and it didn't introduce anything into the game. That's where you're wrong. Because it is Circuit Break that introduced something into Yu-Gi-Oh that we have now that normalized a lot of hand traps into our deck. I thought hand trap meta was a myth. Before the release of Circuit Break, the staples for hand traps was usually one or two. I think it was three, three hand traps. Facts. Right? After the release of the Spiral Link, in that competitive scene, we played 12 hand traps in our game at the time. Are you serious? And right now, and normally now, we play in average 15 hand traps. That's a bit much, don't you think? Right, what do I mean by this? Usually there'll be an in archetype hand trap, that's three. You count the Ash Blossom, that's six. You count Imperm, that's 12. And then you count any other hand traps that to deal with your opponent or things like that that are specified to tailor to your opponent that makes it 15. The truth you made to know. So we have a total and grand total of 15 hand traps that are normalized that we play now in the game. Now why do I mention uh, circuit break and why do I mention this as historic? What, what does it really mean? Well we have uh, in the OCG recently where, they re where a set released Tempai. Tempai is an archetype which is based off of Trident Dra Dragiome, right? Uh, old, uh, very old school uh, Dragon Synchro 10. Now, this is uh, in their competitive scene. Obviously, we haven't got the archetype of the TCG, but they're playing a grand total of 22 hand traps in their deck. Now, is the set that premieres uh, Tempai going to be the same? Is this going to be normalized in the game now? And are we going to start playing afterwards, playing, what, a maximum of 25 hand traps in our game? Have we reached criti critical mass? Have we reached game-breaking point? That's something that we'll wait to see as I get more when that set is released in TCG, and I will talk about it a bit more. But for now, Lunalite, Lirolusk, Number, Subterra, and Vendred. We have our wild card and what premiered in this set, Evenly Matched. Indeed, Evenly Matched is one of the best wild cards we have gotten in a long time. And I think has proven to be one of the best board breakers we've had in Yu-Gi-Oh of all time. Indeed, Evenly Matched in terms of a board breaker before Dark Ruler No More came out anyway, I think was the best board breaker we had in Yu-Gi-Oh for a very long time and is quite historic in that sense, right? So definitely something to consider when we think about board breakers at the time, as we can see it as one of the first and early board breakers introducing the just the concept of breaking boards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. And I think that's all I've got to say, so let's carry on. Okay, and so let's start with the grading. The grading of this set is C. He's more cool as a cucumber. So, why is it a grade C? Well, there were other booster sets that were released at the time of recording of this set. Remember, this is very late in the year. This is October 19, 2017. There were way better sets that came out before this. And so this was definitely a set lacking in a lot of things, right? And definitely not the best set of 2017. Um, with the only standout just being the Spiral Link, I suppose. 
But really, and yes, with the introduction of more hand traps, I guess, but really the only standout card here was evenly matched. Taking evenly matched out of the equation and the introduction of that um, board breaker, Circuit Break doesn't really have a lot to offer, didn't really have a lot to offer the community and uh, player base at large at the time. Um, even though there were some cards in there that were good for the game a few years later, but as of now, as of at that moment, they weren't really that impactful. And while the Spiral Link ha did change our hand trap scene for the foreseeable future and had instant ramifications, as we would soon come to dread, the 12 um, Spiral Staple that was produced as we now play a 15 um, hand trap staple now in our games and i am a bit worried because when we see tempai that was released in that set we don't know i don't know what set it's being released in maybe it's in legacy like destruction we don't know however whatever set tempai is, re is released in in ocg it did have a in their competitive scene, at 20, they were playing 22 hand traps. And we have seen, especially with when an archetype or uh, archetype, uh, you know, plays more hand traps than is the current meta standard, right? It only takes another competitive, it only takes just another meta scene to have that normalized. As remember, when... We had spirals, our meta scene or hand trap scene, we only played three hand traps. We then went to 12 when we were playing spirals and then normalized was 15. So if we're going with the standard way of how this power creep is going to continue, we should, in theory, right, start at 22 when Tempire comes out and then go to 24? And then by the end, we should be on 27 hand traps normalized in the next few years or in the next four years from now, which is actually, when you think about it, quite insane if we're thinking about how power creep works. And so I, I have had a lot of other plays of community saying that, you know, we're not going to get to the point where we're going to be playing 27 hand traps in the next four years. But I'm thinking like... You know, it's not too far off looking at how hand traps, how archetypes are being created now. I mean, the power creep is getting quite insane. So, yeah, that is another topic for another debate. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.